Welcome to this week's Jackson County Board of Commissioners meeting. This meeting is held in the Jackson County Courthouse Auditorium at 10 South Oakdale in Medford. This meeting is held every Wednesday morning at 930 as long as a quorum of two commissioners is available to conduct the business of Jackson County. Your Jackson County Commissioners broadcast this meeting over Rogue Valley Television and it's available for live streaming and review at jacksoncountyor.gov. Under the Government tab, under Recorded Meetings, click on RVTV Live Streaming. The types of business that occur at this meeting include public hearings, official voting on actions by the Board of Commissioners, presentations by departments of the county, and recognition of service that makes our county great. Agendas of the meetings are posted on the Commissioner's Bulletin Board and released on the county website and through local media in the time required for public notice. Many of the conclusions on the business presented to the Board of Commissioners have been discussed in detail and prepared by the administration office and staff prior to consideration at this meeting and the official vote. These prior discussions also have been properly noticed and the work done in a transparent manner. We encourage you to come and experience the process by attending any of these meetings or watch online at jacksoncountyor.gov. And now, your Jackson County Commissioners, Dave Dodderer, Rick Dyer, and Colleen Roberts, working for you. Well, good morning, everyone. It is 9.30, so we'll call the Board of Commissioners regular meeting for April 17, 2024 to order. We are live here in the Courthouse Auditorium and on Zoom on audio video conference. We're going to start today's meeting with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. If you'll please stand. Well, me. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We will move on now into our request for and discussion of non-agenda items. We do have a five minute limit pursuant to the codified ordinances of Jackson County section 213.06. Members of the public may address any item not on the agenda. However, pursuant to RS 192.640, the Board of Commissioners is prohibited from discussing a principal subject that is not on the agenda. Therefore, the Board of Commissioners will listen to your concerns and may consider the matter you raise by asking staff to follow up on any questions or by placing the matter on the agenda for discussion at a future meeting. I don't have anybody signed up in the auditorium today, but if there's anybody here that didn't sign up that would like to speak, I'll give you your time now. Looks like we have none, anyone online. Mr. Chair, I have none with their Zoom hand raised at this time. All right, thank you. Then we will move along. And we'll move on to the uh, consent calendar, which this week consists of the uh, minutes of meetings of our Board of Commissioners work session of March 26, 2024. Board of Commissioners regular meeting of March 27, 2024, a land use meeting of March 27, 2024 on files number 439-23-00008-LRP and 439-23-00024-SUB and our Board of Commissioners staff meeting of March 28, 2024. And I'll move to approve the consent calendar as read. Second. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Dodder? Yes. Commissioner Dyer? Yes, thank you. No public hearings today. We do have three discussion and deliberation items. The first item being an order appointing applicants to fill the three current vacancies on the board of directors of the Jackson County Fire District number five. This is order number 73-24. And Mr. Jordan? Right, Mr. Chair, I know this isn't typical where you would uh, deliberate to fill a position. Typically, we would have be bringing you an order for directions you've already given us to fill this. In this case, uh, the board will recall that uh, your normal Tuesday and Thursday staff meeting and work sessions are being canceled because you're also in the process of budget hearings. So this is uh, got made it to today's agenda for you to make a decision. In case you know and the public knows, Jackson County Fire District 5 has three vacancies on their five-member board of directors. That's the governing body of the district pursuant to Oregon Revised Statute 198-320 sub 1. If a majority of the governing body of the district is vacant, the Board of County Commissioners is required to promptly fill the vacancies. 
uh, notice was posted that the Board of Commissioners was soliciting interested persons to fill the three current base vacancies on the Board of Directors for the Jackson County Fire District 5. As you know, you had 10 applicants. You did interviews on those applicants, five each on April 9th and five each on April 11th. The Board of Commissioners decided at that staff meeting on April 11th to discuss and deliberate those appointments to fill the vacanc vacancies at your regular meeting today. Pursuant to RS 198 320 sub 1, the Board of Commissioners is required to fill the vacancies and following the de de deliberations, approval of the Board will implement that action. So we don't have a, a defined process here as far as how we're going to nominate or discuss the ones that we would uh, prefer to be on the board. I think it may be you know, to talk to each commissioner and ask if there are uh, two or three or whatever their, their top uh, applicants that they would like to appoint are, and then take some uh, nominations from there. Yeah, I would. Uh, I, I think that that's the right way to do this. And I just wanted to uh, say that the way I thought about this was, you know, we have we have three vacancies here. We have uh, ten uh, applicants, and what I'm looking at is I sat down and looked at the applicants and asked myself the question: Okay, we have three. What's the what's the mix of skill sets that we would like to see brought to this to this group? Um, and um, here's how I broke it down. This, is, this was my thinking on this. Um, first, I believe we need somebody with a, uh, with a fire service background and uh, on that. I believe we also need, um, I'm looking at who's on there right now. We have, uh, we have the unincorporated areas. Obviously, this is very important, but we also have the, this is the fire, uh, th this is the fire department for both uh, Phoenix and Talent, and um, I believe there needs to be somebody coming out of Phoenix who is uh, who is on that on there too. And then I'm looking at somebody with other skill sets that uh, that bring bring something to the to the board that's outside of those two areas. So um, what I did was I went back and looked at that, and, and oh by the way I wanted to mention to both of you that I did go ahead and listen to the audio of your your interviews. On Tuesday and Thursday of last week, since I wasn't there, and was very impressed by the way that uh, the way you handled that. Um, I uh, my belief is I'm going to just say that right off the top is I believe John Carnes should be very definitely on there. He's both a, a former fire chief who has worked with the fire district extensively, um, and I know that there are very very there there are many many calls that come out in that area where the two of them work together between, between Ash, the city of Ashland and uh, the fire district. Plus he was the interim city manager for a long time, I believe over a year. So he's got government financial management as well as government leadership background. Um, I know he was also quite successful at that, uh, particularly since he was kind of thrown into it. It was one of those, you know, they, as usual, Ashland uh, moved on and, uh, and he was put into that. So I was gonna look at that. Then when I looked to the, the area of Phoenix, and I would be interested in your thoughts on this, I look at either uh, Chris Lutz, who is the uh, former mayor, or Al Mulhofer, who is a uh, former um, uh, counselor. Uh, both of them have uh, shown leadership uh, from that city, and I think that's, uh, that would be a consideration. And then when I kind of looked at the other, I looked at it and I thought, uh, Greg Carstanzo and Robert Stone don't really fit into any one of those niches, but they fit in for me into somebody who we want to have from, not necessarily a niche, but somebody who has some real, some skill sets of leadership and, uh, and also uh, some background. So I was looking at the two of them. So I would just say that that's my thinking on this right now. Um, your thinking is very similar to mine. Um, I will tell you, I felt all the candidates um, offered experience and a heart to serve and a passion for Fire District 5. Um, I appreciate it. I thought the interviews um, went really well. I really appreciated our, our probably stupid question of who, why do you feel you're the best person for this job? And they all expressed um, Every candidate said kind of a, of a humbleness. I don't know that I'm the best person. And I thought that was really revealing and I uh, appreciated uh, that response from, from the candidates. And 
and I want to also point out the fact that we our passion to fill this it wasn't worth waiting another week which is why we're talking about today being so close moving to fire season and our passion for fire district 5 as well um, but as far as about uh, the appointments I agree with the mix uh, of skill sets and I felt uh, and and my my preference as far as any of the uh, different positions, I don't have a preference. Uh, if, whether it's, you know, two, three, or five for any of these, it, it'll go to the voters next time there's an election. But anyway, I felt John Carnes definitely um, has had expressed the understanding, the experience, and the relationships that have been built um, in, the, in the world of fire and um, in our area. And he also rose to the top of my list. Uh, as far as the area of Phoenix, I thought Chris Luz um, definitely has the experience, the knowledge of public meeting law. He had done his homework, listening to the meetings, um, under trying to understand the issues, and I, he was prepared. And I think that is what showed some extra effort. And I thought that was great. As far as my other, I have a I. I guess that is open in my opinion. I think Greg Costanzo was very, um, uh, had strong, uh, getting you know, strong skills he brings to the board. He, uh, his acknowledgement um, of, of get, needing to get the information, wanting to serve the public, the need for stability and, and awareness and his willingness to get, to get that. Uh, but also, um, I don't know that his interview went as well, but his application was awesome, and that was uh, Kevin Zimmerer. I thought his heart as a citizen and 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 his um, established established uh, residency there, I guess, and and he and the loss of his home in the fire, just uh, his real passion to serve on that fire district board as a as just just a real heart there. Um, and that aspect of it as well is another recommendation uh, between those two. And I just wanted to say that, I, I'm sorry, I left Kevin off there on my other two, because you're, you're right. I, I think that was that was good. And it was kind of one of those three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to leave anybody off because they, they all were very good. They all exhibited, I think, a great passion for the community, a great uh, passion, and, and not just a passion, but a, but a a plan and a, um, a way that they thought things should be able to move forward. And I think they all uh, made some great points. Um, sometimes, you know, it's, it's great to have 10 great candidates it also makes the, uh, the decision more difficult. Uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to agree a lot with what the, the prior two commissioners have said, because I looked at connection to the community, um, you know, what you're involved in the, in the community now, uh, what your relationship has been to specifically to, to Fire District 5 uh, and to these the cities that it serves. Um, and I'm going to agree that I think uh, John Carnes, with his experience, um, extremely well spoken. I think he's probably, uh, I'm not going to say he's old because I wouldn't say it to anybody because I am, but uh, I think his experience, wisdom um, would bring something to the board that I think is beneficial and valuable. And it's not because he's old. Uh, and then as far as uh, Chris Luz, again, an individual who is deeply invested in the community, and you're right, did, did his homework and came in with ideas, came in with, with a plan, came in with information I wasn't aware of. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's something, again, this board has some things um, that need to get ironed out and worked through. I think they're definitely doable, especially with the right folks and the right the right approach and the right plans. And then my third, Greg Costanzo. I just, again, I'm very impressed. I've known Greg quite a while, and I've watched Greg in his personal and professional life and how he comports himself and how he deals with, you know, again, deals with conflict. He's used to dealing with conflict in his current job or his, his, his past profession as a uh, uh, state police officer and, and bomb squad, uh, um, I don't know the exact title, but 
when you're working with bombs, you're working with uh, volatile situations. Um, I don't know if the, the situation on Fire District 5 quite rises to that level, but uh, he's worth used, used to working in high pressure situations. So I also agree those three have uh, what I think the passion, experience, and commitment um, to do a great job for Fire District 5 and the, and the citizens they serve. So I guess we'll take nominations. Or a motion to, to uh, appoint. I will go ahead. I'll, I'll, we're just gonna, let, let, I'll, I'll write them in here. I'm okay. Sure, I'm just going to make sure we, we have to make sure we put them into the right. I, I move that we appoint uh, John Carnes to position number two on the board of directors of the Jackson County Fire District number five. We appoint uh, Chris Lutz to position number three on the board of directors of Jackson County Fire District number five. And then we appoint Greg Costanzo to position number five on the board of directors of Jackson County Fire District number five. And I'll second that. Do we need any discussion? Uh, we discussed that. I think I think that kind of um, encapsulated some of what we all said, and I think those are are three that we I, I believe agreed on. Um, so I don't have any other nominations that I would I would throw in there. Yeah, I I, I had when I came up with the other two, I had uh, you know I had a I had a spread, but uh, you two uh, specifically have got some other people you like, and I completely agree with those, and that's why I'm I'm fine with that. Uh, the point is, we, we really had uh, a, a real. Uh, this was really good. This was this was this was a good. Uh, uh, this this was a good opportunity for us to, to work on this. We had a great group of people, so I leave it at that. Yeah, we had a great uh, the ten candidates that uh, put their letters of interest in and showed up for the interviews. Um, were passionate and um, humble and ready to serve, and I appreciate each one of them and. Uh, it made it difficult to, to choose. I think it'll help the district move forward. I, I would agree. Commissioner Daughter? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Dyer? Yes. Thank you. Okay. We will now move on to our next uh, discussion and deliberation item, which is an order authorizing amendment number one of the Jackson County Personal Services contract dated March 31st, 2023 with Epic Land Solutions Incorporated. This is order number 74-24. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Chair, members of the board, our uh, Roads and Parks Department's undertaking a road improvement project, as probably most people know, out on Foothill Road. This is gonna require acquisition of real property rights from seven properties. The department currently contracts with Epic Land Solutions, Inc. to provide for right-of-way purchasing services, and that includes preparing and presenting offer packets review of title exceptions and sending the purchase and closing documents to the title company to finalize acquisitions. <coughs> Amendment number one extends term of the current contract for Epic Land Solutions Incorporated to obtain the necessary right-of-ways. The amendment will also extend the term of the contract from March 30th of 2024 to January 31st of 2025, resulting in the term being extended beyond 12 months, also requiring authorization from the Board of Commissioners. The amendment does require ratification to become effective March 20th of 2024. It's an expense of $1,958, increasing the current contract amount to $84,980, and I do recommend your approval. Thank you. Ready for motion, if there's no questions. I'll move to approve order 74-24. Second. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Daughter? Yes. Commissioner Dyer? Yes, thank you. Moving on, the final item on our agenda today is an order authorizing a Jacks County uh, public improvement contract with three-dimensional contracting LLC. And this is order number 7524. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Chair, members of the board, Title II of the American with Disabilities Act requires the state and local governments ensure that persons with disabilities have access to pedestrian routes in the public right-of-way. An important part of this requirement is the obligation that streets, roadways, or highways are altered to provide curb ramps where street-level pedestrian walkways cross the curbs. The Road and Parks Department 
We'll be completing a roadway overlay project next year along Antelope Road, which requires the important uh, of the sidewalk ramps to ensure the accessibility and usability of the pedestrian walkway for persons with disabilities. There was an invitation to bid that was published in the February 21st, 2024 edition of the Rogue River Press, the February 21st and February 23rd, 2024 editions of the Daily Journal of Commerce and is also posted to the Jackson County website on February 21st of 2024. We did get three bids, <coughs> three-dimensional contracting LLC bid $318,197, Round Contracting Incorporated bid $334,860. Paramount Ironworks LLC bid $345,889. So happens that our engineer's estimate was much lower than all three of those bids at $259,981. In this case, three-dimensional contracting LLC did submit the lowest bid. They're qualified to perform the work and they should be awarded the contract. In term of the contracts upon execution through August 30th of 2024. It's an expense of $318,197 and I do recommend your approval. Thank you. I, I do have one question, Danny. Since I since I wasn't here last week on this one, this is this is our funding, right? This is not coming from anywhere else, correct? I mean, I, well, I mean, this is this is coming this is coming out of our out of our budget. It's not. This is not because I know some of the work is that's look for example is being done in Ashland. It's coming out of the road fund. That's right. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah, because some of the work, for example, that's being done in Ashland. The state's paying for it, things like that. But I know that what's being done in downtown Medford is being paid for by Medford, and, and this is a this is a result of a of a of a court case mm -hmm. and then a requirement. And it's and you can you can see what the cost is. It's this is huge. So I will go ahead and move approval of order number 75-24. I'll second. Commissioner Dodder. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Commissioner Dyer. Yes, thank you. And that does conclude our agenda today, so we are adjourned. Thank you all for coming. We hope that you have enjoyed this week's Jackson County Board of Commissioners meeting. If you have any questions on any part of the show, please feel free to contact your Jackson County commissioners or staff. You can find their contact information at jacksoncountyor.gov. To review the content of this or any other recent meeting, under the Government tab, under Recorded Meetings, click on RVTV Live Streaming. Well, yeah. well no, I mean, uh, thank you.